Hello, everybody, and welcome back to the Captain's Draft 3.0 Group Stages. We are here with our last matchup and potentially last game of the Group Stages before we all fly out tomorrow and head over to Phoenix to cast the playoffs for Captain's Draft 3.0. Of course, presented by Dota Cinema and Moonduck TV. My name is Bot. Joining me today, as always, is Pitmuckle as well as Grant. And Grant, Digital Chaos got absolutely destroyed in game number one. What do you give them as, uh, what do you give their chances in game number two here? All right, I'm going to give their chances as 50%. There's two teams, you know, and I'm going to give them some advice. Um, drafting stuns is good. It, it wins you lanes. It <laughs> wins you games, you know? I, you know, I would agree with you. I felt like that was a little bit, uh, a bit of a problem for Digital Cast. It was something that they were missing. There is a lot of stuns here, of course, in Brilliant the pool of that. heroes that you've got. You've got some interesting heroes, obviously... Uh, let's see, what's really good? Void, of course, has been available. They've already banned out Io, Brood, Invoker, and PL, which is interesting. That's, uh, I love the Brood ban. Sam, I mean, I think anyone in the Dota scene's like, we're not letting Sam play Brood. And Sam is one of those people who, he'll pick Brood ten games in a row in matchmaking. He, like, he won't feel bad. That's, like, he's that kind of person. Yeah, he does seem like that kind of person. There's a Dirge in the pool, that'll probably be pretty heavily favored, I think. Same with AA. There's a lot of support. This is the opposite of last game. There's a lot of good supports. Yeah, there are. That was actually, the thing I think they were missing really. on, on no. Digital Chaos' side. Yeah. All five of the bottom heroes are supports. It's like, it's like Dazzle, uh, AA, Oracle, and Shadow Demon. Like, that's it. I guess Venge is there, too. There's a couple yeah, of them. Yeah, Shadow Demon, yeah. There's, no, there is quite a few. I think Dirge, Dazzle, and AA are all going to be favorites. Same with Oracle. I'm glad that hero made it in. He's one of the few heroes that, like, came in as a fresh new hero. Seems a little bit strong, but nothing, like, overpowered. This is, uh, well, we'll see what they're going to pick on Digital Chaos' side. Uh, the last band coming through. They do not have first pick. That will be Team Empire. We'll see what they grab. And Death Prophet was banned out. See, I mean, I don't, there was nothing that they really needed to ban that was there in the last game. If there was Batrider, I'd been like, ban, ban that crap immediately. But they don't need to because he's not in the pool, sadly, for Team Empire. But... Um, there's CK still available if they want to get rid of that. They, uh, let's see, is there Warlock? No Warlock, it looks like. Dazzle. Yeah, but that gives the void to Empire, and that's just, I feel like ZZ really wanted to pick that hero, but they knew they weren't going to get it. And still they'll grab the Vengeful Spirit, one of the better supports, especially against Faces Void. The swap out inside the Corona Sphere, also armor reduction is pretty nice, and just to have a stun as well is pretty good. But what's their next pick coming out? AA, wow, both supports, huh? Yeah, and they're gonna take him now. The good thing about like how CD mode works is there's no more bans, so Empire really doesn't have to take like a Shadow Demon Oracle or THD. I don't know, they just take it anyways. Maybe they don't want to give up what a future pick is. I guess I was completely wrong there. And the Gyrocopter comes out. Oracle pretty damn good. False promise between Faces Void and Gyrocopter, pretty damn solid. Um, I don't know if there's anything really else. I guess. Obviously, Fortune Zed for a purge and purifying flames heal. I mean, just to, it's a good hero in general. Like we don't have to talk about it. It's just it's just very strong. Yeah. Whoa, and a Jaku. This is most likely to be a carry vengeful then, or what the could be offline Jaku. Offline Jaku. Yeah, we have not. Have we seen that since like Universe played it in like Ti two? I actually saw it yesterday. I don't believe. Huh. I... Mm -hmm. Touche. Mm -hmm. uh, maybe I'm losing it. There's a good chance that I am. Yeah, it was bull yesterday. Okay, oh. good. I'm not losing it. Nice. Well, maybe it is, and I'm. Did it work? Out? Of course it didn't work out. I mean, How they, long they, did that game they go? Won. They won that game. Oh, all right. But again, they won Dude, I'm just off right now. Kind of... Like, everything you say, it's like, it's just really the opposite is happening. Oh, they're not going to pick Oracle. <laughs> there it is. Okay, well, shit. To be fair, like, I'm maybe they're, you know, yeah, I'm just doing my thing. I'm surprised TA has been in almost every pool. And in Captain's mode, it seems like one of the, like, the top mid picks, but it hasn't been picked, like, almost any time in this tournament, which is really weird because you think it'd be stronger with less counters. What if it gets picked right now and you're just like, again? I just, it's whatever. I just, just honestly just, just open like up done. a Dr. Pepper and just leave. Like, just, <laughs> alright, see you later. JJ, you're in. Oh, God. Please don't pick Yeah, no worries, guys. Far. I gotcha. Undying. They still need a mid-hero. It's gonna be TA. Yeah. It's, it's, I mean, TA or ALK. Honestly, a uh, storm. It's gonna be TA. We've been seeing storm a little bit more now. Sumail has been playing it. Uh, it's not like the hero got completely removed, but I mean the stack nerfs hurt him, and st I mean still just a good hero. It's gonna be TA, yeah. yeah. It's gonna be TA. Fifty seconds left on their well, time in general. Then you'd need to get farmed a TA gyro and faceless though. That almost yeah. 
It might be. It really might be a storm. Well, the thing is, though, that TA can take ancient stacks. Faces Wood can leech experience. He can jungle. Gyrocopter can do. Really I'm the good man. Alright. Oh, dodge the bolt there, baby. Yeah, I, I think it really was because you Five you really do just want like a gyro or TA taking those stacks and getting both of them. There would be so much farm needed, but there's Does the TA count? from DC. Scout. Yeah, sure, dude. All right, well, see you later, man. <laughs> Have a good one. All right, see ya. <laughs> all, all seriousness, this is a resolution TA. This is one of his better heroes. And that means that this is going to be a safe lane Brewmaster, perhaps, or Carry Avengers, as you talked about. It is an off lane Jakiro. Yep, so it will be. It's going to be a safe lane Brewmaster. Yeah. For uh, Bone 7, interestingly enough. Right, so this is super early game oriented kind of lineup. Whereas Empire, if they get late game with Storm Spirit and Gyrocopter, oh boy. That's gonna be tough for digital cast to deal with. They don't, do they have many? They have the stun coming out for vengeful spirit. They can cycle and storm spirit up in the air. They don't have any silences, and it's not like they have anybody going for an orc and malevolence. I guess they have ice path. Killing this storm spirit feels like it's gonna be very difficult, Grant. And is that's why I, such a good pay. It's just gonna be hard to kill them. I mean, they're gonna they're gonna need to rotate at least one or two times before level six with this this venge for sure. All right, ladies and gentlemen, we're gonna jump into the game. Draft has now been completed. We are here on Moonduck TV again. My name is Maude. Joining me today is Pimp as well as Grant Grant. That's actually the last game of the group stages. Of course, this is game number two in Empire. They have a solid draft. Solid enough to absolutely win this game. And uh, it should be a lot of fun to watch. And predictions after the draft is done now, Grant, who do you think is going to win this one? I, I like Empire's picks, but I'm feeling DC in the bottom of my heart here. Bone 7's pan. I think he can pull it through. And I think the... The TA versus Storm matchup is actually really good for TA before level 6. Right. He can just, he almost wins it straight up, so we might see a lot of uh, maybe the Oracle or the Dirge sit middle with the Storm. I would not be surprised to see the Oracle help out and do as much as possible. The one thing I'm a little bit scared of for DC is that Funic does have Purifying Flames. That's so good against all these squishy supports and squishy heroes in general. It gets off Purifying Flames, there's a good chance that that hero is just going to die to it, so... You have to be very careful with all the burst damage that is coming over Empire. They also have a lot of just consistent damage as well. For DC yeah. zone. We'll see how they can deal with it. I like they made Theban by everything. So, uh, Owie's starting off with Boots. And that's extremely smart, especially versus Storm Spirit. They want to put pressure on him. Because if it does get late and he does go for, like, the Lincoln's build, there, there's no way they're stopping. Oh, and it might be a big fight top. Yeah, there is going to be. Oh, oh no. Go. Uh, all right, that was... I don't usually call it like puppy pauses, but that was very close to Catchy. what it feels like. I don't know, man. They're going to go, though. The Fortune Zen's going to fly. Resolution's going to back up. There's going to be the use of the Chilling Touch. I don't know if they should fight into this. Gortz is going to be in trouble. Taking a lot of damage. First Blood goes the way. Resolution. Fairy Fire. Bone 7. Another pause comes out. Oh, no. What's Gortz happening? Gets disconnect. Lem Does he have the range to kill Bone 7? Let's see here. Who are you talking about? Uh, the Funic, Funic just... No, because his base attack's going to be got too last low. Right click. He's got his last so. right click coming out, and it's going to hit Bone 7. That'll do a bit of damage, but it won't kill him. And, he has and the FN can't get there either. This this should be, this should should be I think, Bone 7 surviving. Unless he gets blocked by 1437. Well, we're going to find out. He doesn't have needs to, potion. He needs to, like, he needs to just, like, click there. He needs to click there. Like, right to the right, so that he doesn't block Bone 7. Oh! Oh, my God! How FN got that hit off! I did not see it going... And somehow they get the kill. Still, First Blood will go the way of DC. They give the... Who do they give the bounty room to? Bulba has it, and... I think somebody from... Yeah, Empire Bulba and... Yeah, FN got it. Okay. Yes, and so yeah. FN gets a kill. He gets the bounty room, which gets him up to level 2. Resolution got the first blood, but still, he's a level behind now because he doesn't get the bounty room. That's actually... I know they wanted to fight that because they had Chilling Touch, but this is already going to be some trouble here for Resolution mid. Yep. And look at the start of the smoke rotation, though. Just like we were talking about, they need to get the early kills on Storm before it gets six. Yeah, here comes AUI in 1437. He's going to get spotted. FN's going to get caught. AUI was not in range. Now he is the matchup, so the chilling touch will fly. FN is going to work on 1437. This gank has been a disaster. Resolution immediately called for a back. And uh, that was really super bad for DC, honestly. Yeah, I don't know why Theban let in instead of Owie with the boots and the smoke. And that, if, if this wasn't like an in-house league game, I probably would have LMAO'd. And that just that just not look coordinated. That looked really that bad. Yeah. Whether that's on 1437 or somebody else, that just didn't look really coordinated, like you mentioned. 
I don't know what the dealio is there. Bone 7, 14 seconds, gonna fly. He's gonna get Purifying Flame healed up, but they will get the kill with yet another Purifying Flame, and Funic gets the job done. And so, again, already not a great start once again for DC and Empire. And they seem to be firing on all cylinders for the most part. Yeah, Bulba's having a, a decent time bottom, though, especially once he's, these Tango's starting to use. He already had his health pod, so Bulba's gonna need to do some heavy lifting here. And it's not going to be easy. He gets started taking down towers pretty early because he is a Jakir. He's already got his level 2 liquid fire. His brewmaster's not getting farmed, though. Three last six, he's already died. Bone 7 not really having the greatest game, whether that's because of the, the laning setup or because he's just had trouble on his own. Remains to be seen. But they will be in a tri lane versus tri lane. Mid lane, there will be nine lessons for resolution. Again, FN, though, is level 4, and resolution is level 3. FN has had a better start. He gets a miss with that overload proc, so he doesn't quite get that damage off. But... Yeah, I'm getting that he got two kills and that well he's involved in two kills and he got that bounty run is just a good start for FN even with TA getting more CS. Yeah, this is this is looking pretty good because the Jarrocraft is also getting twelve lessons for Empire. They're at a really good spot. They're gonna they're not really getting much out of this aggressive trial in top lane. I think DC might just have to rotate out and just leave Brewmaster and his owners rotate Jakiro in and see what he could do. Havos will take a brief fire. He's got no time walk for another 12 seconds. If Bulba wanted to dive that, he might have been able to get the kill, but that would be very optimistic. Still, he's done a great job of chewing through Havos' regen. He's only got one tangle left, and he had like four just a little bit ago, and he's going to take another liquid fire. And Havos keeps standing next to his tower, so when he gets liquid fired, the tower's getting hit by it as well. It's just a little thing, but yeah. he's going to have to go heal, I think. Yeah, he's going to go all the way back. A little high oh, no. gets caught out. Sorry, oh, oh, sorry. There's the self for Hobo's command, like you talked about. Decay on to two Gorits. He's level two. He's actually taking a lot of damage. He'll hit a couple of tower hits, actually. So they have to force out some regen up onto Alohan's hands. They did a pretty good job there, but still he's farming well. Um, I, for Hobo's bottom, this is where you really wish you had backtrack like the spell and not the ability with time walk. You know what I mean? Yeah, time walk's good, but yeah, just backtrack. Yeah, you. And look at this, his health post, Tango's gone again, he's just, he's almost dead. He's like, I can't really stay here. He's going to have to go back at some point. He's even an experienced top lane, it looks like Bone7 and Aloha Dance going toe-to-toe. -to -toe. The usage of the Purifying Flames, he's going to pop up the stick, another Purifying Flames, but the long range right click from Gortz will get the job done, the double decay, and they're looking to dive this. 1437 almost goes down to the Purifying Flames, still stay alive. The amount of spin ability that Oracle has with that ability is insane. Plus, he went for an ult tally, so he gets extra... Uh, mana pool, and on top of that, he has really good Daya's right click already. So Empire, they're crushing his top lane really, in, in every way, shape, and form. Yeah, this is just amazing. Just amazing early game from Empire again. Gyro already with the phase boots. Dirge just dies to a neutral creep. Go back, heal a little quicker. And yeah, no worries. Bone Seven setting up at eight last hits. Twenty six for Gyro, and this for some reason. They're still doing this duel, and however, mid lane, they're looking for that gank. AUI 2000 looking for FN. He might fall, and he will. Purifying Flames, Fortune 10 will go. Funic might get this kill, but it will he die for it? Oh, Resolution's not six. He's going to get Fate's Edict off, and maybe we'll survive here. He's going to try to chase him down. He's got no melt available, and he's going to even get a Clarity pop-up as well. But here comes Gortz as well. Resolution has gone too far in. They have no way to really stop him from moving, with the exception of Fortune's Dead, but they're too far away. And Resolution should survive here. Coming through, it's going to be 1437. And Resolution gets the kill on FN. Yeah, that's... If he had sidetracked, he would have killed Funic as well. Yeah, and look at that. Five experience from level six on Storm. That's exactly when they needed the gank. Here's the ball lady coming in. 1437, getting a kick off. Fortune's end. He's about to fall. Chilling Touch is available. But now the match boost will come through. But there's three heroes up on the high ground. And that's the level six coming into work already for FN. So just a great gank coming out from Empire. Good, good return gank. They really needed it. I know Bulba, 29-9 bottom, though, versus 19-2 and two Havos, so at least he's still doing decently there. Oh, they're going to wrap in from the backside. Here comes Funnick and Gortz. They've got level 2 Tombstone. Bone 7 does not have split. The clap will go. He's got stick charges. They might get Gortz here. Bone 7 only going to survive for a moment longer as the last way click, but Funnick in trouble. Here comes Bulba. He's going to try to do that heavy lifting like you talked about. They get off the tailing touch. They want to kill that freaking gyrocopter, but he's too speedy. And in fact, both of them are going to get away scot-free. But they still lose Bone 7 yet again. This is the big difference between, I think, DC and Empire. Is that there's really just no farm for the Brewmaster. And Vos getting farm for his faces void in the offlane. You know, it's undy undying. Well, und und undying players love just suiciding for kills. They're all about that. It's a, the perfect hero for someone who likes 
dying. That I guess. And sir. Yeah. Run at you, heroes. Well, Brewmaster's gonna finally get some room down bottom lane to to farm, and he shouldn't fall. I mean, even with the Chrono Bone Seven, it's pretty tanky with the Stout Shield. Obviously, Brunk and Drawer, Brunk and Brawler, Drunken and Brawler, Dear Lord, all right. Brunk and Drawer. Yeah. <laughs> I am drunk. Mautism strikes yet again, and uh, well, back to top. It actually looks like Bulba's gonna put some pressure here on this Tier One Tower. He didn't get the bottom Tier One Tower, but what else? This is feels. Oh, now he spotted he out. Uh, he might be dead here. He I doesn't want. Know. He can't ball forward. He'll lose all his mana, and yeah, resolution will just kill him. Yeah. This seems like last game again, though. They take the early lead, so then uh, Bulba in the offlane has to rotate, and Havos like gets shut down. But then he, he he gets open like three or four minutes up, and they're gonna go on Bone Seven now. Yeah, Bone Seven is gonna get caught bottom. Havos has got his level six. They have purifying flames. They might be able to take him down. Does he have split yet? No, he's level five. I don't know, man. I. I... I, they really need resolution and, and Bulba to step up here. They they have to get them some extra farm going there. But Bulba might get gang top. So, so 4 to 37. They actually see him. They're going to back away. They get up an Observer Ward as well. So that would give them sufficient in the jungle. Do they stack up the Ancients here? No. AUI is about to, but there's an Observer Ward shadowing this on the high ground. So this is going to be dangerous if they do so. And it looks like, I know Chikira just has a Sage's Mask, but he's most likely going the Yules, and that's a decent way of shutting down the Storm. If you get the Yules, obviously it's an automatic Ice Path in the middle lane. They're looking for a bite here. There's the ball letting in. They actually get the kill on Funnik and FN. Looking for the kill on AUI. He'll find it, but he's low on mana. He'll ball letting down to the low ground. TP's going to come through. They get the TP coming in for Bulba. Can he hit the Ice Path is the question. He's going to juke it and jive it. The dual breath will fly. He'll get up to the high ground. He's out of mana now. And they don't have any help. Ice Path will go. Resolution's got the mail. He'll hit it up as well. And he's going to just ball letting back to the low ground. They need the one more right click. The chilling touch. This solar rep. He'll fall. Resolution gets the kill. Gortz is going to come in. And he might fall as well. They get the Ice Vortex on the ground as well. The dual breath comes out. One more right click will do the job. Funny cannot save him. And now they even get up a side trap. Bone 7 coming in looking for Funny. The purifying flames still doesn't have his level 6. But here comes Resolution. And DC. They just have a great fight there, Graham. Look at that. Double kill for Resolution. And four dead, I think, throughout that entire engagement. Yep, that is exactly what DC need. Now they're going to get a, most likely a free tower middle. And they're going to be able to just start rotating around with Bulba's 8. Vengeance or plus Liquid Fire. Yeah, they're doing a lot of damage. Look how fast the tower goes down. I, I told you DC was in charge of this game from the beginning. Yeah, did you? Yeah, I think I did. I'm, I'm sure I said it, so... Well, I'm going to go ahead and thank the Dr. Pepper 23 flavors for that one. Yeah, me too. And now, Resolution, Treads Aquila. Do you believe, is this going to be a Blink or a Deso game? I it's mean, almost both, always Deso, I think. It seems I, that way, yeah. I mean, I would not be surprised to see Blink just for better positioning, especially Radiant against the Storm Spirit, but is he is going to pick up their early Mithril Hammer, and that'll answer the question. Yes, sir. FN is going to be picking up boots as well as a soul ring. We'll see if he wants to go for the bloodstone or if he goes for the more newer build of, well, I wouldn't say newer, but the more appropriate build of this patch, I think, which is, of course, the Orchid. And uh, I don't oh, know how look at this Orchid actually big is. rotation. Top buns. Owie and Bulba. Bulba's already back. Oh, good. they already backed wow. away. AUI might die for this, but oh, they're going to go behind. And Bulba is in some trouble. He's going to see Funnick. He's going to get caught. He is dead. He's going to try to drop the dual breath. There's the Corona coming out. The Ice Path came through and Bulba will fall. Corona expended for it, but Empire will find themselves a big pickup as Bulba hits the dirt. Yeah, that's their, that was their best farming hero right there, and taking him out is actually big. Yeah. It's still very close to even, though. Even with that, uh, that kill for Empire, it's about maybe a 500 net worth advantage here. The biggest thing is they haven't killed Aloha Dance yet for DC. That's really the biggest issue, right? I don't know yeah. if they're going to be able to kill him. We'll wait and see if that's going to actually be the case. They need a blink for Bone 7 for sure. Die Trap will go. He's going to head behind the tower and they're going to try to zone him out. Bone 7 will be a big dude and that's it. Yeah, no, don't go too crazy. You got to, you got those kills middle. Let's not go insane. <laughs> yes. You're level 7. I guess you've got Radiant's split. Speaking in mid lane, FN going to work on the tier 1 tower. They might go for a trade here, but it's definitely favorite that of FN if he gets the tower. They will take this quicker for Bone Set, or rather for Bulba and Bone Seven and crew. Here comes Gortz. He's got to drop Tombstone, maybe. He's got a couple of stacks. Now the clap comes through the Macro Pyre. The Solar will fly, and it'll keep him alive for a moment longer. They even get the split off against the TP. FN might be in trouble. He's going to go ahead and head to the river. He has a Aestrian. All right, he's fine. He's completely fine. So maybe a split that's not really needed for Bone Seven. Still, he gets the kill, or helps get the kill, rather. As I think it is the TA that gets it done, which is huge. He's going to head top. And they're going to go for this last tier one tower, smart. Yeah, they 
They should defend mid though, and I think that's gonna be Bulbous job. Let's see if he in with uh, Bone Seven so he can get farm gear mid. And he's, he's still getting, getting closer. Yeah, and he really needs eight. that. He's done an okay job. Uh, Havos almost has Vlad's, which will make this a little bit more difficult, giving them a little bit of extra damage and, of course, armor and you know, life steal, blah blah blah. Did they stack up this ancient stack? About to. Resolution is so... He's going to have his Desolator at like 12 minutes, man. That's huge. Yeah, and with an Aquila bottle and treads. After that initial laning phase blunder from giving the... Uh, not getting his rune, but that's a TA versus Storm before level 6 for you. Yeah, he did a great job. They missed up on a gank earlier, but they've recovered nicely. Radiant They'll drop down an Observer Ward Bulba, I think, probably maybe scouted that out. He's going to TP away. They actually think they see that TP as well. Uh, top tower's gonna go down, no glyph. Yeah, Aloha Dance getting the last right click on it. The creeps will do the job. So that's a pretty good push. That is a dragon lance for a gyrocopter, by the way, which I'm sure he will at some point disassemble to get uh, probably BKB and a butterfly, but still, that's very interesting. That is not something you see every day for a gyro. Yeah, that's. I, okay. I like that actually. Do you like that? I think that's pretty I... cool. I, I don't know if I like it. I'm, I'm trying to think, like, I mean, he doesn't have the best rank. I just don't see what it adds to him, per se. He's not fighting at all. So why not just get, like, an S and Y and run at him? But I'm not one to criticize. Law Dance has been putting in the work. Yeah, he really has. Last game, this game is done all right. 0-0-4. Oh, oh, they'll lose their top tier in tower, but uh, they'll trade it, it looks like, for the bottom. Which is fine. Navos almost flats in 300. Just yeah. make their push a little easier. Empire is starting to get that work, and they got Radiant's almost uh, whatever attack. item they want for FN, at least the first Radiant's component of it. He's got 2,000 gold. Time walk away is the mid clip full fly. So all do, the two ones are about to go. Dude, Dyer's wards are annoying me. They, I always keep thinking they're chickens. Like when I just go right over them. They're like it looks like a chicken to me. Yeah, it's just, I don't know. Radiant's uh, bottom tower I can see that being annoying. Attack. Um, they've picked up the Blink Dagger, by the way, for Bone 7, but he still is only on boots of speed. But maybe that's all he needs. He's kind of, he's going to run out of mana quickly, but... Yeah, we haven't, I mean, Gortz is only level 5 on that Undying. His Tombstone's not the strongest thing. It, it goes down, if you just get a good Blink Clap in the middle of, like, four of them, this is an easy team fight for DC with that. Yeah, especially with the Desolator, Desolator not coming yeah. up. They're going to smoke up. They're going to head around, probably, in this general area. And try to find a jump in. There's the clap coming in onto two. The split comes through as well. The ice blast onto two. They get off the false promise, but boy, Gortz is going to be in trouble. Funnick will more than likely fall as well. Gortz is going to go down to the back of fire. They get the cyclone off. They're going to time walk away. Can they get this kill onto Aloha Dance as well? Is going to be the question. The boulder toss all the way downtown. Can they blink it and look for a clap? The answer to that question is yes. He's in trouble, Hobos. He's got the usage of the Corona Spirit time. The ice will fly. Ice path comes in. FN looking to turn this. They'll lose one. Now the Chrono hits on the Bulba and AUI. Resolution's going to work on Aloha Dance. Can he get this kill? Two more right clicks will do the job. He's going to juke and jive away. FN gets a double kill. Ice Path, it hits, but they have to back away now. It's a two for three trade as FN gets a triple kill. As all three of the squishy heroes, all two of the squishy heroes, plus Bone Seven, fall in the, at the end of that fight. And that's just a Chronosphere. That's the power of the Faces Void. Yeah, it wasn't even like, it just zoned him out, and then we thought Resolution looked like he was just going to blow up the Gyro, but man, Gyro, 10 plus 3 armor just by himself, I didn't realize his base armor is insane. The phase boots boost speed helps him get away, yeah. and this is why you need a Blink Dagger next for Resolution, and he knows this, and he's going to farm it up as quickly as possible. If he gets a Blink Dagger, this game gets a little bit more difficult for Empire. Still though, that is an impressive display coming up from the Storm Spirit, and great zoning ability from Hovos to get through that Chronosphere drop down. Yep, it was a two for zero trade for DC, and then they just they overcommit, trying to pick up that gyrocopter, and they lose three. Well, it's going to be a little bit different now because Bulba has picked up a Yules. So if the Chronosphere gets off, it can maybe Yules up either him or the the gyro or the yep. storm. But storm is going to be going for Bloodstone. It looks like. And it looks like he has it here. Yeah, that's one huge. more wave. Yeah, he's going to get the uh, recipe pretty soon. And they don't have Chronosphere for another forty nine. So I think if you're and, or if you're DC, rather, you want to try to make something happen here. Yeah, I assume we'll see a Blank coming out of Havos next. Seems to be now that hero seems to be pretty standardly built, like through every every regen, region, region, whatever. I got you. We'll drop the liquid fire here onto this tier. Two tower will take some harass, and Bulba will continue to go to work. 
top lane is gonna get split push while this is all happening. Oh, our dances. Yasha is just about completed. Here we go, Courier! Oh, FN looked for it, but instead he hit the... I think he might have just misclicked and hit the creep wave instead. Or maybe he was going for the, the creep wave pull. Now this is about to be in backdoor protection here. There it is. And they're going to TP top. They're going to try to find Aloha Dance. Jumping in his AUI, but he's not quite close enough to get a swap off. And he's already too fast. He's going away with the phase boots. Good try. All right. I don't know, man. I'm probably going to get spot if you like. Oh, and bottom lane is... Might be a gang on the Gortz, but we already have the Dragon Lance bottom. Oh, there's the Chrono. Havos was there. The Ice Blast will sail through. Not really doing that much damage. He avoids the usage of the Ice Blast, but still, the Ice Path comes out. That's one dead resolution. will tie to TP. He does not get time locked, so he'll survive. And 1437 might not be so lucky. He's got a TP. He might have to use it here. As fun as going to try to chase him down. So, great usage of the Chronosphere. Gets one kill. FN will rotate back towards mid. He's got the Cro rather the Bloodstone ready to go. He's going to jump onto AUI 2000, but he's gone too far. He's going to actually jump away. AUI, there was a couple of missed chances there, I believe. He didn't hit him really once. Yeah, They'll ping out jump. the fact that they're going for Roche. No Chronosphere is ready to go. Bulba's up in 10. How fast can they take this? Not that fast. They need to get there immediately, though, for DC to be able to defend this. I'm surprised the Law Dance isn't they just using trapping. Rocket Barrage. I think they need to back. Ice Blast comes in. Hobos is going to get bashed up. The Ice Blast will hit. And he's going to be on the high ground. He'll TP away. FN's on the high ground. Lucky for Bone 7. Resolution wants to finish this. He could do it very quickly. They drop down the Observer Ward on the high ground. Here comes the call. And Resolution will avoid it. So that's done. Swap out. They'll find one. Match Missile flies. Gorat is in trouble. Pops up the Stick Charge. Solar does nothing on AUI. They'll get the kill. Phonics low as well. And again, these supports will fall, but this time, there is no Chronosphere. They'll have to deal with FN. He's got a haste rune, and they won't be able to catch him. They should head right into Roshan. It looks like that will be the case. He's going to try to make sure they don't go in the pit just yet. Resolution will come and pop up the meld, and this should die very quickly. We'll see if FN can get the steal off, though. He's about to go for it. It looks like Rosh is going to fall, though. Dead Aegis, or rather, dead Rosh. Aegis will go to Resolution. Good trade coming in from DC. And Blink Dagger up on TA because of that as well. That's the huge item that we were talking about earlier. Alright. Well, where do you go from here? DC now have Aegis. Chrono is back up. I don't know if they want to fight into that. What do you think? Yeah, I don't think so. Both teams have decent fight and decent push. I think because of the Chrono, it's just easier for Empire to take fights. But as long as Bulba stays in the back, just waits it out. He has Ewell's Ice Path. He can turn a fight around if he doesn't get chronoed. Oh, he's so close to the level 2 macro power as well. And that damage yeah. would be so nice to have. It, this Blink, if they, I think they just want to farm up uh, Blink on Havos. And when they get it, he's just going to have an easy time picking oh, off the support. Oh, Aloha Dance is about to get Ewell's up. And he's going to be done so here momentarily. Bulba, can he get it in time? Ewell's is going to go. The Ice Path macro power will be next. Ice Blast will come through as well. There's a lot of ice and a lot of fire. And that will be, of course, Oha Dance burning to death. Finally, for the first time in the game, M uh, DC will get the big kill onto Gyrocopter. And Gyro's going second item Manta style. You yeah, rarely see Manta on Gyro at all. And... It's not like there's a silence they have to deal with or anything. That's kind of strange, I suppose. I mean, yeah, I'm not really sure what it's it for. Maybe it's Drunken it's Haze, I guess. Drunken it's Haze, Liquid Fire. Yeah. yeah, you're right, you're right. Here we go, That's, the tier 2 tower will fall, though. Arcane rune on the Storm Spirit. Almost as good as a regen rune, I feel like. Maybe somehow a little bit better, but I don't think that's the case. He's going to come in from behind. This is going to be the team fight that I think FN can absolutely style on. But they see him. There's an Observer Ward. They're going to head over to him, but FN seems to know something's happening. Maybe not. They're all really crowding around. They want to go on this hero. Oh, but he gets off the Remnant. Here comes the Yules. They can't quite get it in time. The Wave of Terror. They know there's a ward now, and they're going to be able to take it down momentarily. And they'll Oops. just back up. What do you think about Resolution? What's his next item with 2,000 gold in the bank now? I think it has to be probably crit, but it could, could be a Yasha. Okay. Just a, a casual Yasha, but I think you would have bought that up already if it was. I feel like they need more disabled, but Resolution is not going to get that, so... Yeah, he might get... I mean, he will if it goes late enough. He'll probably get the, like, fifth, sixth item Abyssal, but not for a while. Yeah. They could use another... I feel like later on in the game, the Abyssal might come out for Bone 7 as well. Uh, speaking of Bone 7, he's going to try to take you away. Ball Lightning in. Can they get the pull off? No, they cannot. Bone 7 will be able to make it through. 
Good try from FN though. Not not quite close enough. He's going for Orca, by the way. He's picked up Rover the Magi. At least I imagine that's what it is. Is FN still on Power Rangers? I'm not sure actually. Oops, smoke gang coming. No, it's not even smoke. Radiant's just running out. Moritz is dead, I think. There's the blink in. Melvin's missed his Melvin though. Oh, did he? Well, he's still dead anyways. Yeah. Too much damage. And they're just gonna push in without a tombstone. It's actually. I mean, they have. They still have really good team fight, but it makes it a little harder. They've got cooldown ready to go. They're gonna pop the Fate Seedic nicely on the resolution. There's the Drunken Haste going into Aloha Dance. That'll be up for a couple of seconds. Maybe about two to three more seconds. Glyph has to be used. Top blend is getting pressured by FN. He's got the TP in five. He doesn't have TP for five seconds, so they have a little bit of time here. The Liquid Fire will go. Jump in, Bone Tip will get off another Drunken Haste. This Fate Edict is only resolution. Fortune Set's going to fly as well. Fraction is up and ready to go. He needs to get healed. They're looking for him. Flat Cannon will fly. He'll be okay. They'll back up together. Radiant's Top tier two was taken by FN. He'll TP home now, and it looks like backing together is going to be DC. Yeah, I mean, you'll see. And Bulba didn't even go up to the tower to liquid fire. He, Radiant's they, they need him to not get caught in Chrono. He can't even risk the damage. Yeah. He just has to stay so far back. That's tough. Well, they go for yeah. smoke though for Empire. It looks like they're ready to go. They have the smoke up on the Undying. They're just gonna push this wave out quickly and then go for it afterwards, perhaps. The top lane is going to be, have to be pushed out for air, DC, similarly. And down bottom, Bubble will continue to push that out as well. So we've hit kind of a sailmate here with the age picked up for resolution. They have it for a little bit, and you're absolutely right about his next item. His Daedalus, very close to completion. He just needs the Demon Edge. And once his Aegis is gone, he will pop up the Chrysalis into his inventory. Wonder, I'm, I'm assuming this is the first time Pro Dota it's ever been a Dragon Lance Manta style gyro. I, if we had a stats person, I'm sure they would say that's correct, but... Oh, wait, I, th I think we do. He's coming in. Who? Lax? Do you hear? Alright, it is correct. Wow. Oh, that was you. No, I, that was... <laughs> no, nah, nah, man. <laughs> <laughs> are you laughing at me, JJ? Are you laughing at... Radiance uh, I knew it. You jerk. Attack. Yeah, Slag somehow got into the mid Dude, I don't know what I, I have no Why idea what I was the air? I'm sure was I have no <laughs> idea what I was thinking. That would be impressive if you can, first of all, get into the game while it's going on. That would solve so many problems for a lot of Dota 2 casters. Secondly, while he's doing it in midair, it would have been even more impressive. But I didn't have that information until you just told me. So I will at least say that much. This game is fairly even right now. Gold only going 1,000 in the way of Empire. And it, I mean, it's mostly almost all on resolution, like the gold. So if he falls, that's just, that's a lot of their net worth. Yeah, 13,000 net worth. And then the next closest on his team is almost halfway down, 7,000. Coming out for Bone 7, or rather, excuse me, Bulba. But yeah, this is a big issue, is they're very top-heavy. And then you look at Empire, it's like, okay, well, you have three in the top four currently. So Empire are in a very good spot. They've even picked up an Aether Lens for the Oracle. What does this Undying have? He doesn't have anything. Oh, he's playing the, is, the PPD, yeah. Yeah, he's playing the 6 roll. You're absolutely right. And FN is, what, 150 off of his Orchids now, though? My goodness. He is, he's had a, just a good series already. And we're only a game and a half in. And I feel like when he gets his Orchid malevolence, that, that's just going to make this game that much harder for DC. Because yeah. you have the Void, who's going to chrono people. And now, even if you miss Bulba, you can just have FN come in from the back and Orchid him. Which is really good. You know what else is that you can get off that that orchid before the split comes out and I think that's yep. gonna be pretty huge as well. God, that tower melts so quick. Yeah, they're Radiant's gonna try to push up here. Meanwhile, the split push will attack. continue down bottom. Daedalus up. One top. blink crit, man. They could literally just win a game. Yeah. We'll see if that's gonna be the case. Radiant's bottom tower is well, under attack. They're gonna keep pushing. Tower Day 3 tower getting attack. assaulted. Bowen 7. Looking to back with his team. And they won't try to fight this. I think they lost the Aegis. Yeah, they have the Daedalus now. So absolutely they did. And uh, this is probably the right play. They have to keep the waves pushed out. They'll head back towards bottom and mid here and wait for Roche to be back up, which will be a couple of minutes, I believe. Yeah, they're cool. AA as well, playing the uh, a little more. He has 800 gold magic wand and bracer. But this Venge actually getting a little bit of farm at least. The Helm of Dominator, I think, of the yeah. Venge, right? He, yeah, he has quite a bit of damage with just that Vengeance or the Treads, Drums, and HOD. Oh, here we go. Smoke oh, coming no. out. They're going to find Resolution. He's going to get caught. Chronosphere will go. They'll bring out Resolution down. The top in net worth will finally fall, and that is a 634 gold bounty coming out for a Wicked 6-3, which FNL was able to pick up. And that is 
Not only is Zorka that he's already completed, but already up to a thousand gold as well. And suddenly they're gonna try to push as Resolution does it at buyback for 42 seconds. He's down, dead in the dirt. I'm just gonna be Bulba needs to get some some sick ice paths and stuff to clear these waves. Yeah, this might be just a Rax or a, well, they're gonna go for the tier two first. Oh, they yeah. have Glyph up. No, they don't have Glyph. Glyph is gone. And Resolution still dead for 25. This defense is gonna have to be crucial for them. There is no Chronosphere, luckily enough, so Empire, they might just take this tier 2 and back away and say that's enough, and it looks like that might be the case. And yeah, they might go check Roche. It's not up yet, but it'll be up there very soon. Yeah, it looks like they will back up together looking for the double damage rune. This bottom rune spot, which the side trap will scout. Roche is up in, wow, 30 seconds. What a timer. This could be a big fight at Roche now, and they're paying it. They both teams have to know. We're gonna see a smoke probably from Radiant. Oh, do they have one? I don't know if they do. No. Let's see. Not in them. Not. Well, they have one on fourteen thirty-seven. Okay, they're ready to go. But they. They. There's a ward here. Let's see if they clear it out. Oh God, this is a very interesting Roche timing. And they pick up the BKB too for the Jarcraft. That's beautiful. Huge item pickup. Yeah. Alright. It really is just Resolution's positioning. As long as he doesn't get caught out, he somehow gets into the back line. He could just wreck face, or he could just die to a chrono. Resolution knows he needs a BKB to stop a lot of damage from FN, as well as a lot of damage in general. Time lock bashes. The Gyrocopter, though, he'll be able to do some right clicks still. He's not quite there yet, so BKB, I think, for Resolution would be huge. Much like it is for... A little hot dance, but here we go. Smoke for both teams. We're about to see a clash in the river, it looks like. Resolution will head into the pit. And Gorix is about to scout them out. Let's see how fast this Roche will fall. They've got Chrono up and ready to go. Havos is looking to jump in. They get the Chrono onto four. They won't be able to take anybody down just yet. Bulba and AUI all fall, and they've lost two. They're about to lose a third. They're about to lose a fourth. Resolution's gonna go down. Great Chronosphere. Oloha Dance gets the triple kill. They're gonna get a team wipe as Bone 7 will be the next to fall. What a play from Havos to get off the four man Chrono. They get off a beautiful Gyrocopter ulti on top of it to jump in with the Storm Spirit and everything. That was an impossible play for DC. And they'll lose all five because of it. <laughs> That's. Well, what can go wrong will go wrong. That's about the worst thing that happened for DC, and they are going to lose one Rax. Maybe two, yeah, that was... Oh, man. This could be game. Avost is now going to go up to the high ground with Aloha Dance. He'll pick up his butterfly next. He's got the quarter staff. He disassembled the Dragon Lance a little while ago. Man, FN and Hobos, as well as Aloha Dance, have had a great game. They just were not able to deal with the Faces Void and the Chronosphere. Again, they had a chance to ban out this hero, this hero that's been causing the most, I think, the most problems for DC. And so they let it through, and the Faces Void gets them again. Oof. Hobos is just playing his three role to pretty well here. And he has an Ags now, oh boy. Yeah, he's, he's sitting on his Ags, he's got Blink Dagger, he's got a Vlad, so he's only got three items currently. Three big items anyways, we'll see what he goes for next. He can start building it a damage at this point, but Resolution is now down by the wayside, as of course he's only got uh, not his BKB yet, he's looking to get to it, he's actually second in net worth still, but this game is looking very difficult. It's still not done yet, and DC can win this game, but Resolution is going to have to put in a lot of work. I mean, he still does a lot of damage. But it's not going to be easy. It's all about the positioning. They just, I mean, when you get four-man chrono, it obviously something's wrong with your positioning. Yeah. I mean, they really want To be fair, that Roche was going to die so quickly, yeah, but was. they didn't have any vision coming out as to where Empire was. If they had maybe seen the smoke up, if they had maybe just had vision of them over towards that secret shop, I would have said, okay, they could do something. But and We have a bottled regen now in the storm, too, for this next fight. That's frightening. Not to mention he's already at 14 bloodstone tar charges. Not quite at that like immediate, like a lot of region yet, but still pretty good. Oh, he's, he's going to jump all the way in 1437. He actually missed the jump, but he's still going to get the kill as he has a Shiva's guard. And this is going to continue to happen as the game progresses further. He also used the regen rune, but it seems not to have worked out the way he wanted it to, I believe. Oh, right, Aloha Dance, the Yule Size Path Magnifier. He's got BKB. He'll pop it. And Resolution is not there. Had he been there, Aloha Dance might have gotten chunked down by him, but yeah, at least they forced out the BKB and everyone's able to make it away. AY2000 has a TP scroll, he should probably use it here. 
And it looks like you go. Law Dance is only 700 away now from his butterfly. Dear Lord. DC might lose every single series here in Captain's Draft. They're going to lose AUI 2000 next. Boba and Bone 7 looking to try to stop FN. He has obviously the Aegis and his Fates Edict up, so all that magic damage. He's actually running pretty low on mana here, but he still has enough to get away if necessary. He's just trying to, I think, establish that to show off here. Fates Edict will fly through as well, and he'll stay alive. He's going to reach it up with his Bloodstone. Purifying Flames will heal him back up. And meanwhile, top lane's getting pushed in as well, so here comes the split push, it looks like. Radiance top tower is under and we'll see how DC tries to hold this. It's not going to be easy. They have AUI back at 14. He has buyback, but coming in mid FNL will keep, or FN, excuse me, will keep the mid lane pushed in with the Sheba's guard. Bone 7 looking to jump in, but he's got his blink dagger. However, it's been he just blinked in. He's even going to get orchid in as well. The pull comes through as well. The bail comes out. Fortress had pure flying clips. More than enough damage to kill him. They get the cold feet off onto FN. He'll back away, but it's only for a moment. Resolution. He's been fate eating, so he's been disarmed. Coming through. Now jump in. Ice blast on it too. Nice, but FN jumps all the way through and gets Bulba. And there's the great use to the Chrono Spear. On to two. FN's outside of the Chrono. They're going to lose a third here. Resolution will fall next. Double kill for both Aloha Dance as well as FN. And that is going to be it. Empire. They make it to the top two spot here. They'll get to the upper bracket for Captain's Draft 3.0. And the group stages. DC will lose every single series they played. However, they are still in the tournament because they are in the lo 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 loser's bracket. Dear God. <laughs> yeah, no, 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 they're gifted for being the loser's bracket. A, a team liquid first round. That's loser's right. Bracket. That is not going to be an easy matchup for them. Well, what did you think, Grant, about this series and about today um, overall? No, Empire just looked amazing, and so did Alliance. And both those teams going to move on in the winner's bracket now. I that think was... uh, Virtus Pro in that first game, it looked like they had a chance to take a game off Alliance there, and then just the really good S4 just played amazingly. I do remember that. He has been just playing amazingly overall. Alliance as a whole looked like one of the best teams in the world yeah. right now. Oh, I no, think no. And a lot of people would agree with that, I believe. They looked absolutely insane. Empire uh, played pretty well here, too. Yeah, they did, and they secured themselves that winner's break because of it, so just doing what they have to do. Well, ladies and gentlemen, it has been an absolute pleasure casting the group stages for you guys, but it is not done yet. We still have the playoffs to go, and we are so happy you guys have joined us for this tournament. It's been so fun bringing you all the action here, and, well, we'll be traveling tomorrow. The majority of us will, at the very least, myself, Zayori, and a couple others, will be heading over to Phoenix, Arizona to be part of the Moonduck TV studio that we'll have going on with Captain's Draft 3.0. Joining us will be Grant, as well as a couple other people coming in to help cast this tournament for us. Yeah. Uh, as always, make sure you follow us on Mood Deck TV. What, what would you got? What did you say, Grant? It's, it's, Slacks is going there right now, right? That's right. He's on route. He's flying. Oh, he's not doing man. stats for us. I kind of wish he was, but still. I mean, he, he might be. You never know. He might sit in, you know? Yeah. I just hope. Honestly, if I'm no, I'm not going to say it. Slack's a great guy. You know, I'm glad I glad I get a ding dong ditching whenever I want. It's actually so peaceful. I, I literally do it like once every three weeks. I'm sure he knows. Wait, do you actually? Yeah, I can't absolutely. I no, I, I really do. Like, just I just do it like if I'm driving by randomly, like I'll stop by. It's hard because he's on a third floor apartment. So no. you have to you have to run up and down the stairs, but no, absolutely, yeah, I, you're crazy. I literally Honestly, do do it. I can't even tell if you're trolling or not. But we'll talk about no, that I'm, later. No, I'm asking. You're I'm dead really serious. Not. Okay, well, that's actually pretty crazy. Nonetheless, uh, JJ, do you have any thoughts before we head out of here? As this is our last group stage game, and it feels pretty great. No, oh, man, I'm just I'm just done. Good stuff. Good series. You're done. Today. Let's go. Well. This has been an uh, insane week. I want to say a couple things real quick. This has been an insane week for here for us here at Moonduck TV. We had a great end to Canada Cup. I know a lot of you were probably watching it. It was an insane, insane couple of games coming out. As Complexity did a great job against Elite Wolves. Really great best of five coming out. Um, and now the group stages are, in fact, over as well. We had a lot of fun casting that. I'm sorry I wasn't here for the first game of the day, but I gave you my reasons as to why. Uh, we will. Why is Shannon yelling in the background? What is he yelling about? What do you mean, whatever? I don't care. Whatever. All right. With that said, make sure you guys follow us on Twitter, at MothDota for me, at PitMuckle for Pam, at Grand Grant for Grant, at MoonDuckTV for our, of course, beautiful studio. We will see you guys on February the 12th for the upper bracket, including Evil Geniuses versus Empire and Alliance versus Vegas Squadron. With that said, hope you guys have an excellent rest of the week, and we'll see you all very soon. Bye, everybody.